Thank you. We thank bless you. and worship your holy name. Thank you for the grace you've given unto us, mm -hmm. even to be alive for this moment and a time like this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for the coordinator of this program. Thank you, Lord, for our own lives and families. We bless your holy name. Even all that will speak here tonight, let it minister to others in Jesus' name. Let it bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord, that you have guide and guide us. Continue to guide and guide everyone Amen. that will listen even to this piece in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for asking for that because you answer by fire. Thank you, in Jesus' name we have prayed. The Lord, hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to welcome each of you to today's uh, couple's timeouts. It's a privilege to have my prayer to the Lord in my front this evening. Uh, we give all the glory to God for their lives. I'm Amen. so proud to have them. And I know that they are coming to this program today will be a huge blessing to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They are here to share with us the secrets behind their successful marriage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad because my, personally, I'm going to be learning a lot from them. I've invited Nomi before. Uh, she has shared so many things with the ladies who attended program that day. And it was a huge blessing to us for having us. So having her and a husband, there is a double portion of blessings. So we are glad to have you, sir. Ma. You're welcome, Ma. Uh, as a custom, I don't really introduce my uh, guests. I always give them the priority for them to introduce themselves to us. So over to you, sir, Ma. We would like to know you. Um, for last year, I came with me of uh, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Victory House of Praise for All Nations, situated in I Park MA, United States. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, mommy, we would like you to just tell us how did you meet daddy? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. I actually um, attend LCF Redeem um, Fellowship um, while at the University of Villarreal. I am not like a person that want people to know her. In my own little space, I mean, I'm part of the drama and group of the fellowship. And so I come in, I ask my drama. All I know about him is one of our pastors in the fellowship. There's no more to it. I don't have a relationship that I come to church, I say prayer and I leave before anybody will say, hey. but my acting skill, I think every fourth Sunday of the month in the fellowship, we act drama. These are stage drama. I know by the grace of God is a talent, is a ministry that God gave to me. And so, um, I know him being my pastor at the fellowship. Yes. No more. <laughs> no more. No more. So how do you now come to uh, the agreement of getting married, getting married to each other? So um, when I knew pastor, I, I'm actually in one relationship, like a relationship that I, I Maybe I might not be alive again today because of deceit and all of that. So it takes time for me to say, hey, I just this is the time, this is it, I am done and I need to move. And I think at that point, when I cut off the relationship, Pastor already graduated from University of Illinois, he's already home doing his own business or his own job. While I'm still, I I actually also am just finished and I'm going for NYSC. Um, I think he had come around with some of the people that I know him through as well. When, we, when they, I mean, in their hostel, those are friends to this, my ex, I will not say, I mean, I don't know if it is boyfriend, but then it, they are his friend as well. So they came and they always come around my house and greet me. So he came to visit them and they told him, oh, Shade lives in this estate. So, oh, really? Let me, let's go to your daddy. Uh, is your sister in your fellowship? And so they came to our house. That's how I met him. I'm like, oh, and this is our pastor from the fellowship. They say, yes, yeah. okay. And um, that's how the, the journey began. And um, I think with time, he told me about what God is telling him. I mean, uh, I mean, we have to pray about it. We have to do what is necessary. And we went through all that together and the rest is history. Wow, thank God. We give all the glory to God. 
That mm -hmm. was a beautiful uh, one. Thank you so much, Ma. Daddy, we would like to know, you know, being the president of the, uh, one of the um, pastors in the, in the fellowship, um, how were you able to discern that this is the person among the many other beautiful ladies? I know you have access to other, <laughs> other ladies. You know, as a pastor of a fellowship, or one of the pastors, you have access to different ladies. Even if you don't look at them, they will look at you. I mentioned sure about so How were you able to know that mm, this is the right one? We would like to know, sir. Uh, thank you very much for that question. Well, uh, the our own story is not like my own because for me, I have seen why we were in hundred level and she was just coming into the school. I, when we were reading in the lecture theater, I'm talking of uh, 1997 uh, now. So I spot her and to God who made me, I just look at her and I said in my heart that this will be a wife material. But fortunately, I'm the type that when it comes to women, food and money, I don't want it to be in between me and people. And by the time I know she's in a relationship, I'm not all that discouraged, but I keep her as my friend. Hmm. Knowing what I want, know what God, the Holy Spirit have, you know, inspired in me. And that's how we were. And that's why by the time I came here, our courtship was not that long, just six months, seven months there about we get married. But meanwhile, I have keep her as a friend, as a sister, all through this way. But by the time I wanted to graduate, when I you need, you know, when people want to graduate, they will be saying, oh, you have to go with somebody. What are you doing? Who is your partner, this and that? There's a lady in my unit. I'm one of, I oversee publicity program. I manage all that. There's a lady. So I went to the lady I proposed because you know, prayer when all, of, all your guys yes. are saying. Yes. So I proposed, say, but I told her that God, God didn't tell me anything because I don't know how to deceive people. I approached her. She asked me if God has said, I said, no, mm -hmm. this is me. I came out to her plainly, but, and I like to visit to know people down to their family. So when we got, uh, uh, we were in holiday before the final semester, I visited her in her house and what I saw and I asked some questions and she has hiding something about their dad and all, why the dad and mommy are not living together and all this stuff. I know that this, and she's the only daughter. So mm -hmm. knowing that if I marry this, I will marry the mother. And I saw the picture of the mother, like, oh, you know, all this yeah, cool stuff. I said, this is not the way. When we get back to school after the semester, after the holiday, I never go back to her because I have told her, it's not God that said, it's me that came, I told her. So by the time we went for service and all this stuff, we came back, I came visiting her and I heard the story. I said, oh, this is the best opportunity she has been. The person I have been looking at all this while. And that's how I moved in and God intervened and God took all the glory. And that's why we are here today. Wow. <laughs> Very powerful words, sir. Thank you for not lying. Some brothers will say God said. When God didn't say anything at all. But thank God you didn't rob God. You mentioned that it was you alone. And that was even made it easier for you to, to leave the lady that this I'm not doing. I said, I did, I said to myself, not God. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Since you said that you met in the fellowship and uh, as Christians, were you able to involve some um, leaders, spiritual leaders, while you are courting? You know, like some fellowships, they want you to know if brother A is courting sister B, we want to know. He be, maybe some uh, senior colleagues will like, in, mm -hmm. want to know about your relationship in order to guide you. Please, sir, um, during that time, do you in, 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 in involve any of your spiritual leaders about it? No, we didn't invite any spiritual leader, but we invited God. I mean, through prayers and fasting, because I know times will tell me, go fast. 
at this time we will pray together. And that's the person that actually knew about the courtship. Yes. Uh, in you, addition, sir. in addition, during that time, you know, we were not in the same church now. I was attending another redeem. She was attending another redeem. And we were a little far away from each other. And uh, we, as she has rightly said, we involve God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, and He perfected everything. Thank you so much, sir. Why you, after agreeing to start dating or cutting, uh, are there any of your parents who like said, no, it's not possible? Maybe because um, the brother is from one state that the parents didn't like, or it's like this, because I experienced that during my own time, but God took absolute control. So I just want to know, is there anything like that? Will any of your parents like reject your, your, your choice? Is there anything like that, Sam? Huh? Yeah, thank you for the question. Well, to the glory of God, because we have invited God from the beginning, it was an easy ride mm -hmm. uh, from the parent, both parents, uh, both sides. And uh, to the glory of God, we came from the same state and even from the same local government. So it makes it gladden the heart of our parents by the time they had. So that was one of the, you know, one of the factors that quickly buttered the point that make everything work, you know, fast and fine. Wow. Same local government. Mm. Congratulations, Farmer. That one is very hard to see now, <laughs> even from the area. Wow. Thank God. I'm so happy, Sam. Uh, I would like to know, Mommy, you know, you said that he was a pastor. You've known him to be a very strong man of God right for that time. But I know that even aside all those, uh, you should be able to have some qualities that you desire in a man. Oh, these are the things I would like to say, my man, if these things are not there, I'm not going to marry that person. We would like you to just highlight for us some of the qualities you see in daddy that made you to say, okay, I am ready for you. You'll be my crown. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. I mean, um, fortunately enough, we, we actually had a um, couple single conference um, yesterday mm -hmm. through today. And I was hearing that there is code that ladies would, this is how they want the guy to be. Um, I don't have my jota here, but I know something about tall, um, dark. slim, dark, the teeth, and hair, <laughs> rich, and R and A. I was like, in my own time, I, I, it's the first time I'm hearing it anyway, because I don't think I, I know such level of looking for who is tall, who is dark, whoever God blesses you with. That my first relationship, yes, is a very tall guy. Yes, he's good looking. Yes, he's handsome. But in light, the life is full of deceit. He's a very deceitful person. You can't know. Like even to the extent, the money she gets to, from you, she uses it to service other ladies. That's how bad he was. And so, but God delivered me. All I needed is a man that is after the act of God serious man that would serve the Lord. Because one thing I fear is to be in a place I'm not going to be free to serve the Lord or the person that will not be able to, you know, support me to fly whatever I want to do in life. Somebody that will be my, you know, some, some husband could be jealous of their wife. Like, is she the only one? But don't forget the progress of your wife is your own progress. If she makes money, it's your money. If she if she shine in any area, it's you that yes. you are shining. I mean, yes. yes. Um, he I see him as a very serious-minded person when it comes to the things of God. He takes it with all, all of his heart. He do it diligently, far beyond what you would expect him to do. And he's a very hardworking person. He's not a lazy person. And um, um I mean, since then until now, it shows in everything he's doing. We might not be millionaire, but we are not where we are when we started. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Ma. I've, been, I've interviewed like um, six couples now. And one of the one of the qualities they said they saw in their spouses uh, is this being a child of God loving God and ready to give everything to God. 
which you just mentioned as well. So I think it's one of the qualities our ladies should look out for in a man and guys should look out for in a lady, not about the physical appearance, but what they have on their inside. Thank you so, so much, ma. I would like to know, you know, when you first um, married, you have individual differences. I, uh, we, we went through it through our own time. My husband loved to own lights whenever um, he sleeps, he like to own the lights, want to see everything that is going. Me, I was brought up from a family where we have our lights whenever we want to sleep. So or because he went to boarding school or through, so they don't have lights there. That when we first met, when we came, when we married and we started sleeping beside each other, it's called that he doesn't like to have the light and I cannot sleep under the light being turned on. I was like, we need to switch the light, this light off. He said, no, we can't switch it off. Okay. <laughs> It's the only spirit that can help us in this situation. And as God we have it, God taught us in how to do it. So the Lord helped us to be able to navigate ourselves out of that situation. I would like to know, Ma, what are the individual differences you, you discover after coming together as husband and wife? And how were you able to navigate yourself out of the situation? <laughs> well, well, let me just, I know ladies, fun, but let me just buttress the point that you have just said. Likewise, myself, I don't like putting light off when I want to sleep. But when we came together, we have to work it out. And another thing is, uh, we learn to know each other better. Because like me, in the university, even she know when they visited our hostel, I want my everything to be in order, the bed to be laid. If you try to sleep on my bed, if you don't lay it when you leave, I, have, I come to the hostel, my bed is not laid well. I also sleep here. The sexual person cannot sleep there again. I will want that person because I want it laid the way I leave it. So this getting married is another story because I want things to be wherever I put it. But when I come, it's not there. But to the glory of God, I was able to manage through God help me. Because I know this, we are coming from different backgrounds, different experience. So patience, love, you know, and uh, forgiveness in everything. When, oh, this, why is this one? Oh, yeah, oh, pick this way. So I got to learn gradually, gradually. And God, today, God is perfecting everything. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, we thank God. Do you have anything to say, Ma? I mean, it, where I, where I grew up um, with my parents, I, I mean, we're we're organized too. Yes. I mean, well, I mean, I can say that we are, we are organized, and um, it might not be par, it might not be too excellent. But I, I mean, I'm yeah, not, not a lady. I'm I'm not somebody that is um, dirty. I like clean environment, and uh, I put everyone around me to work. When it comes to that, you have to, you can't stay with me without doing one or two things. If you don't want to stay with me, that's fine. But if you're actually under my roof, you have to be clean, and that has extended to my children. Your room needs to be, your closet needs to be. It has to be like I said. It needs to be arranged. And um, thank God that um, it's just um, ants that is rubbing ants in that area to make sure that our environments are clean. Some ladies, I mean, when visitor comes, you see them pushing things around, sweeping and cleaning. No, it's a routine in my house that every Saturday cleaning needs to be done. I mean, while we were still living in an apartment before we bought our house, I mean, my husband would wash the bathroom. I don't watch um, bathroom. I would clean the whole house. I would. Um, Make sure food is there in our rented apartment, but you will make sure it's his duty every week to wash the bathroom. So when we bought house, and now we have three bathrooms, he doesn't watch bathrooms. So that's one thing I like. Why will you not watch bathroom? And he told me when there is snow outside, do he has never asked me for one day to go push machine. When is this summertime that the old uh, weed is up, he goes in and you know 
clear out the whole of our house. I mean, every two weeks, he has not asked me. So those are the things that draw him back from washing bathrooms. And um, I, I, I get it because before I was thinking, why will he just leave it? Now that we have three, when we have one, he was doing it. So we have three, he's not doing it. So those are differences I saw from us um, staying in um, a rented apartment and then going moving into our house. But I was able to understand because I asked and he told me, what he's doing now is more, more takes more energy from me yes, yes. than the past ones. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Sama, for sharing. We really appreciate that. Sir? Yeah, in addition, you know, she's a clean lady, yes. cook well, but oh. what I'm trying to bring out is when I put my phone here, I want to meet it <laughs> here before. But maybe she's cleaning and she put it away. I come with put the phone away from here. So that is the area I'm just trying to stress. <laughs> yes, you know, sir. You know that I'm not talking of cleaning. I just use my, you know, yes. bunk in the hostel as an example. <laughs> yes, daddy, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I would like to know, sir, which period in your marriage was the most challenging time for both of you as couple? And how were you able to navigate yourself out of it. We all have most difficult times sometimes as we like, how are we going to do it? How are we going to come out of it? Do you have anyone you want to share with us, Ama? Uh, yes. I think the initial stage was the most difficult time coming from different backgrounds. I'm from village, she's from Lagos. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was born in Lagos. I was born in village, grew up in village, school in village before I moved to university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my first time in Lagos was 1990. Oh, no, sorry, 1991. 90 through 91, I can't remember. There's a, so the difference is clear. The experience I have from village, bringing it to somebody who's experience different from Lagos. But the most challenging time is the very first year when we are trusting God, you know, after nine months, there's nothing. It was very challenging. There's a prayer from here and there. And uh, but to the glory of God, we are able to navigate through. Knowing, knowing that God is packaging that we have our first child as American citizen. Yes. Because sometimes, you know, when you are, uh, you, my, the Bible says, my ways are not your way. Uh, the heaven is far than the earth, so am I way to your way. To the glory of God, before we, by the time we came to America, it was seven months pregnant. But if we have had it for the very first year, that there's nothing that we were just, what is this, what is this? It will have been in Nigeria and we will not be able to even bring the child. Maybe because it will be still little and by the time we play visa lottery, it's not part of the whatever, whatever. And at the end of the day, we have to leave him behind. Wow. So it was so challenging, but God saw us through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, sir. We do appreciate so, that sharing. Thank you, sir. Uh, we would like to know, sir, you know, this is America. And one of the um, issues parents face is um, this difficulty in raising godly children. Uh, it's very, very, uh, parents are struggling. I've been to your house several times. I've met with your children. As a matter of fact, my husband and myself decided that we're looking for a house very close to your house. So our children will be coming to your house. <laughs> we thought of it sometimes ago, like, my husband said, if they are very close to Emmanuel and Adiola, they will be learning from them. I want them to grow together. I was like, how are we going to do it if we don't have the chance to move to that area? So it got to that point that we were thinking because we've seen them. We've seen what the Lord is doing in their lives. So can you please tell us, Ma and Sa, how you've been doing it? I know it is not easy. It's not 100% easy. Because they are growing day by day. They meet with different friends in the school. Now they come and they still maintain Please share with us, Sama. What is the secret behind this? 
Praise the Lord. The Bible has taught us to train the child in the way of the Lord. And when he's growing, he will not depart from it. So if your life is abandoned in, in God and you're serving him diligently, whatever fruit he's going to give to you would, you know, bend to authority. Um, I see them as little as they are. I'm not, we don't save the road for them. They do anything wrong, we we'll discipline them. You just don't slap children here and there. When you do, give them a reason why. So that next time that will not be re repeated. Um, in the past, I would imagine a little thing, little things that I should have overlooked, I will beat, I will beat. Uh, I, I, I know my husband told me, you can't beat him for everything. Sometimes when I see him saying today is going to spank him well, that means he may have over, over step the boundary. That even if I, sometimes I will stand and say, please, he said, if I come near, my, my body will hear out of the lashes too. She just says separate because he needs to do it today because he needs to let him know what he's been doing. And he's not somebody that he, he, he beats children. No, he gives him room for you to be full. But the day it will be full, nobody would tell him not to do it. And um, they get it. You know, sometimes I'll cry because it's too much. But he's <laughs> like, I want it. And today I have to open it up for him. And um I thank God because both of them are doing well in, 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 in Christ. Emmanuel is a drummer in church. He prays a special instrument. You know, um, and I will quickly say a testimony about his special instrument that he's playing right now. He got involved um, in that program because we went to the store together, both myself and the two children. And the way they were pushing the cart and conversing with me and taking what we needed, like, one woman was in the store. He doesn't know me. But it's like everywhere we go, every eye we were meeting. And by the time we want to pay, we were behind each other. And she said, excuse me. I don't know. I just like these two children. I've watched you all through this store. Their behavior connected me to them somehow. But I want to share something with you. My first daughter, now in the university on scholarship, based on the music school she went to, and my spirit said I should share the information with you. Even though it's lottery, play it for both of them. They might win. Even if it's one that won, you will know what I'm talking when you get into that program. So apparently, um, one of the concerts that we went to, the woman was there. I don't even know her again. And that was, he gave me the phone number, his, her phone number. I don't know her, he's a stranger. He gave me the email. I gave my email. He sent the thing. I applied for Emmanuel and Adiola. They, they got them into the lottery and um, went for auditioning. And it's their behavior that attracts the woman to give Emmanuel that link. So today, people see him playing that bazoon and all that. I mean, we have to acquire the bazoon. I went to where they are repairing it. And they were saying one was 35,000. I called my husband and I said, this one is also. That thing it was all the $35,000. That mm -hmm. how will we buy this? And they accept us to buy it for him because yes. he needs to have his own personal one. But God will have it one way or the other. The teacher called us, a senior student is leaving um, the, the, that group and would want to give it as a gift to a junior one, even though wow. we still pay. And that's how we got that his own. It's his personal own. I mean, what we could have paid 35,000 for God in a way gave it to us. I would say it's free, even though we still paid. Um, is there is this behavior that made him acquire that? And I just want to say, you know, the parents need to serve God for their children to be godly. You have to serve God for your children to be godly. It's just like a gift. If you desist or delay and think God is nothing, then every fruit that comes through you to God would treat them as nothing. It's it's just it's just like that. And we cannot deceive ourselves. But when you dedicate your life, it will look for a way to, it's a dividend. It will look for a way to bless you. That's what the Bible says. And part of the work of your hands are your seeds, which include your children. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Actually, so it means that what you don't have, you can't give them. Mm -mm. You need to be sure of the Lord you are serving before you can give them that Christ. Wow, and thank God. Quickly, quickly yes, in addition, ma. Uh, yes, so we are the picture that the children are looking at. Whatever they see in you, that's what they want to practice. <laughs> I remember when Emmanuel was two, 
we visited a uh, family, uh, Dr. Gumbodede by name. And after we want to leave, as we rise of that, I say, let us pray. Emmanuel just took it over. And he prayed and he said, surely, he was pointing to the man and the wife, surely goodness and God. And the man said, I did, did you hear what, do you see what your child did, just did? That if it is, you, if you are in a secret court, that's how we expose to you. Mm. Mm. So that's why I want to bring out there, like she said, train your child the way it should go. When it grow up, it will not depart from it. So right from very little, what we are doing, the, the practicing it and the locus, you know, as an example of what they want to be. They, they're actually monitoring us, or they're observing us. They're observing us. So it is likely they do what we are doing. So if we are faking things, they too will fake it for us. <laughs> we have to be real in Christ. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we would like to know about your, uh, how you manage your finances. Um, we have different, um, have very different opinions uh, from different couples about how they manage their finances. They've told us so many things and they are all powerful. So we would like to know, Sam, how you manage your finances because if this is one of the pieces of divorce, separation, troubles, turbulence in homes. So we will not want to skip it at all. If there's any way you want to bless us in that area, please go ahead, Sama. We are ready to learn. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, if we are prudent, if you marry, if you don't, if you actually marry somebody that is not a waster, you'll be able to, you know, make obligations for what you needed in life and you will get there. And um, I'm saying an example, you know, when we were coming to the country, I mean, we met with people, pastors, they prayed with us and all of that. And I think part of prophecy we, we, we learned is that people that even helped you along the way, when you come here, in years to come, you will render help to them. Yes. Like it's already been said. But if the word of God goes forward, you need to do your own part for that fulfillment of the word. So when we go to this country, it's not that we're, I mean, we, go, we brought certificate here, but this country is a leveler, it levels you out. And it's you that will need to crawl out of that leveling and then get your feet and get to where you really desire to be. And so when we are coming up, he has two jobs. I have one because I have to take care of the kids. Um, when every Friday they pay, they pay us. The second of this job, they pay every two weeks. So what we do is when we get money on Friday, it comes around and says, okay, this is what our house rent is. This is what bills that needs to be paid. This is how much we need for food. This is how much is going to go into gas to, to fuel our cars. The rest, let's put it in savings. And so when it's time for us to buy house, to, to buy our, our house, um, it was the same time as well we were looking to actually have a new car because I need to go to school in a far place and I'm not trusting the secondhand car that I have at that time. So, but in a way, God still did everything for us. We bought the new car, we got our home and all because we were able to say, okay, this is the money we have. This is what we need to do. This is what needs to be done. And then this is part is going to go to savings. We, 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 it's not like, oh, it's my money. You are the man. Go fed, go pay. I mean, if he's the one paying for the rent or the mortgage, is the one that will pay the bill, is the one that will do this, buy you food because it's the man. That mentality of Nigeria that men will provide, then you will rather dig the grave very early because stress is will kill him. And we have seen men that stress killed because yeah. the wife felt it's my money, he needs to cover everything. This uh -huh. country is not a place where one person covers everything. Yes. The two of us have to work together to make sure we, we rub our hand. Thank you so much, sir. And Ma, we work together to, to get things done. Thank you, sir, Ma. So make sure you do something. 
Don't leave the man. It is you are very correct, ma. It is important that you help your man. Help your woman. Do not leave your partner today to, to, to pay the bills alone. Thank mm. you so much, sir, Amma. Um, we would like to know what values can, bo can both of you say that is the unifying factor for the success of your marriage? Praise God. What values can both of us say that is the unifying factor? I mean, the unifying factor is our beliefs. If our beliefs does not come together, there's no way we will be in agreement. He said, except to be in agreement, they cannot, it is not possible. So even, I'm not talking about agreement because I'm CAC, I'm redeemed, or I'm Sele, I'm Kerubu. I'm talking about having faith in one Christ, the father of all who died for our sin. If we don't have that, that's why it's difficult for people that, okay, I'm a Christian, my husband is a Muslim. We're not of the same faith. So it might be difficult for us to get some things done. But once, and if it is a Muslim, Muslim, that is their faith. Their success will be in their marriage because they have the belief that it will work out. So as a Christian, you must have a unique belief. Believing in Christ, who is the altar and the finisher of our faith, and his name is love. So the belief, the faith, and the love is what can actually bring about the success of every marriage. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, ma'am. In addition, you know, uh christ god the father god the son god the holy spirit is the unifying factor because we believe in him we trust in him that he will make the marriage successful and to his glory is working things out for us not that we don't have our differences but god has helped us because any marriage that say oh everything is rosy from beginning uh, <laughs> to the they, next, are not they are not the telling the years, truth years, they are not telling the truth <laughs> We have misunderstanding. We forgive each other. We yes, move sir. on. And God has been helping us. That's why I say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit has been the unifying factor. Thank you, sir. I love the fact that you are being real. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. Um, I want to, I just want to ask mommy this um, part of this question. This is the best advice section. So we try to take these people questions from other people, or we try to see it from other angle. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be asking about your personal um, um, life, the story about your personal life. I just want to ask Ma, I think because of your field, I'm going to be asking you this question, Ma. As a practicing psychiatrist knows, what advice would you give to a young lady who is suffering from trauma, from traumatic from traumatic emotional pain, from a relationship breakup with a man or vice versa that could potentially lead to depression? Um, just of recent, my husband was telling me some statistics about the people who are depressed in Nigeria the statistics and it was um, very, very pathetic. It wasn't a good news to hear when he was telling me. So uh, it was alarming because it's not, it's not good. And majority of these people are not, um, they don't, some of them don't uh, really agree that they are going through that. They don't come out to agree that this is what is happening to them. They think that they can still manage, navigate things, but they are really suffering. They are really going through a lot. And part of the people who are suffering from this um, traumatic uh, problem are the people who um, had problem in their relationships. So we want to know how, what is the best advice you can give to people in this situation now? Praise the Lord. Currently, I actually completed my master's in psych nursing. I'm waiting to write my exam, so I'm not practicing yet. But as the Holy Spirit, I mean, would help me. We've declared I mean, for it. somebody that, amen, for somebody that is traumatic, a traumatic event is something that happened to you based on what you have experienced before. And that thing is bringing the memory back to you, is bringing those things back to you and is affecting you negatively. 
as a child of God, as a Christian, um, you don't want to get to the extent where you are depressed. I'm going to put one, one thing up first. A broken relationship is better than a broken marriage. Don't ever think, oh, the end of the world has come. The best, the best and the best man will come. I, can, I went through it, but with, with, in no time, God just moved me out and I'm in a better place. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if I had gone with that person, my life would be life of deceit. Maybe, maybe I'll be in Nigeria. Maybe, definitely I'll be in Nigeria because <laughs> till now he's still in Nigeria. Part of his lie package is to, you know, rope me and get me into America and I will be alone here working and sending money to him mm-hmm. while he's using it to enjoy other women. But thank God that plan was distorted. That plan was destroyed. That relationship was broken. Did I feel um, not happy? Yes, I wasn't. But God turned my, my sorrow around and gave me a better package. Praise the Lord. So if you are suffering from a traumatic experience or emotional pain due to a relationship breakup, I want you to take your time and thank God for that breakup. Because a broken relationship is better than a broken marriage. Two, if you know that this is really affecting you, I will want you to seek help. Seek help for psychologists. Go to people that will, therapy is a good one. You want to go in for therapy where you have somebody to talk to and relate and you can come out of this experience in no time. Not sit on that experience because that will be a portion that will draw you down the train that now you'll be requesting to take medications. You don't want to get to that route. So I would I encourage you First of all, is to thank God that that broke up happened. The second thing is now for you to seek help. Talk to a therapist before it gets really, really worse. And I pray the Lord Almighty will sweeten you and give you that, the, the bone of your bone, the flesh of your flesh, in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Um, I don't know if Daddy will be able to... Um, help us to take this. The reason why I said it, I thought it was for um, mommy, but now I can say that the question can be best uh, answered by a man. So daddy, he said, if my spouse can't be trusted with money, waste money on reckless living, should I still be transparent with my earnings? Uh, before I wanted to say, oh, we are we are the women, we are very prudent. So this question is talking to a man. No, it's not to a man alone. So daddy can answer it from that aspect and we will learn also from that. Thank you, yeah, sir. Thank you very much for that question. It's both sides, it's vice versa. And as she has rightly said, it is a uh, marriage retreat by from our province for this weekend yesterday and today and this same question was asked this same question was asked there so (laughs) with the spirit of god is one uh the answer and which i concur with is that when it's like this the spouse cannot be trusted maybe spend too much you say oh let's keep this before you know it's blown all you need to do, you need to be still transparent because if you are not transparent, that will be another issue. So still need to transfer, but go into investment, go into a, an isusu or a contribution and let him know that you are saving for the future of both of you. Because if you do it secretly, he doesn't See? know, it become <laughs> an issue. You think maybe, you are, maybe for the man, he would think, oh, the woman would think, oh, he's saving to go and marry another woman. Mm. Then for the woman, for the man, he would think, oh, so he's saving maybe to go and bid out to do something secretly. Let him know that you have joined and this also. So, so, so amount is going there and you are not getting this money back until after a year. Then you need prayer and fasting as well. So yes. that in fasting and prayer, because the Bible says we should not cease in fasting. Pray all time. Pray and fast over issues then that will be another way of helping. That's the the contribution that I contributed in that marriage seminar concerning this. Another person shipping that they should 
invest, but let your husband or your wife know that you are investing so so amount on this so that it will not become an issue that will scatter the marriage. Mm -hmm. Say it's for us. This money is being saved yes. for our future. So that how we prevent extravagant spending. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mommy, do you have any addition? Oh, um, you he said it. Let's, let's That's what we're saying. That's another angle to it. But that person <laughs> needs to be aware that you are making some savings that could not be. be, be yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. So we've come to the end of this interview. And I must say that this is a huge blessing to me personally because I've learned a lot. And I'm going to be contacting mommy secretly for some things, <laughs> especially about uh, Emmanuel's uh, music school. So thank you so much, sir and ma. We are blessed to have you. Daddy, you. please, we would like you to close for us um, with prayer. Thank you, sir. Thank you also for having us. Thank God. Thank God, we, sir. we didn't take it for granted. And we pray that as many that hear this, it will help their relationship in the name of Jesus. Okay. Authority in heaven will bless and worship you. Thank you, Lord Thank Jesus. you for a time like this. Thank, Thank you God. for our marriage that is 17 years. Hallelujah. Thank you for our interviewer, her own marriage too. Mm -hmm. Father, we give all the glory to you, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, we commit everyone that will listen to this interview into your holy hand. Father, we pray they will benefit it with shaping their marriage and foster love and make them unite more and more in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray, O Lord, for every single that we listen to this message. It will help them to choose right. They will not choose wrong in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. The Lord will give them the bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And at the end, Father, the grace to serve you and make it to your kingdom that it will not be the issue of spouse that will deny us your kingdom. Father, release that grace unto us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for answer Thank prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Most precious, most glorious name we are praying. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Man. God bless you, sir. Thank you for having us. God bless you. Yes, sir.